Hi everyone, welcome to another Trish Time. It's Wednesday at 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Well, as close as I am to it, Kentucky. Beautiful day and lots of sunshine coming in, so I'm happy about that. Before I start this quick demo on encaustic crazing, as I'm calling it, I wanted to let you know what else is going on. So if you tune in with me on Saturdays at noon Eastern, you won't find me this week. I'll be off doing something with my oldest son who's down to visit, but instead I'm coming to you Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern, because it is the artist reception gallery hop here in Lexington, and I'll take you through my exhibit, the conjoined exhibit with Blake Eames here at the City Gallery. And I will not be behind the camera, I'll be in front of the camera. My son is going to run the Periscope 6 p.m. Eastern on Friday. I would love to have you along. We'll take a peek at what's going on, visit with some gallery hoppers, and uh, just get a really good sense of the scope of the exhibit before it, um, I think we've got two more weeks going before it comes down. So look forward to that. And then next Wednesday, I will be back with you doing another demo here at 11 o'clock Eastern. So thanks for coming along on these. I have a lot of fun broadcasting. Tell your friends if they are unaware as yet what Periscope is. And let's get started. Like I said, encaustic crazing. This whole process started for me with shellac. I've been doing shellac and encaustic from the very first get-go. My, my, honest to gosh, first week of learning official, quote-unquote, encaustic, because I'm sure you all are with me that you started the, started into encaustic basically with experimentation did it all wrong as it is before you learn to do it right. Well, when I was back in that stage, the very first week of, like I said, the official encaustic, I started in on shellac. So it's been a good 12 years that I've had shellac in my portfolio, if you will. I don't do it often anymore. Uh, my, my techniques have come to be surrounded by other things, but this crazing, this whole breaking up the surface and watching that beautiful organic line work happen that is so cool with shellac happens with other things as well and that's what I wanted to share with you a little bit today. Now, I have only three elements going on here but this same process can be done with other things so if you have in your repertoire of technique practice or studio supply if you have other gessos, if you have gouaches, um, pull them out and give them a try and see if they won't, what way they won't move for you. What I'm demonstrating here today are alcohol inks, which I also use with shellac in different ways, but that's for a later demo. Pan pastel once again, and oil paint, or in this case, the pigment stick. So all three of these, I will show how I do encaustic crazing. All of them react differently. They also react differently depending how thick you've applied these elements, thick or thin, how long they've dried or not dried. So play with that as well when you experiment with this yourself. For me, for this demo, this is completely dry. Pan Pastel has gone down and not been fused yet, so it's dry and loose. The oil paint has been here for two days, but it's still wet. So not entirely dry except for the alcohol ink. And as an aside, for those of you who do not come to the shellac or even want to come to the shellac to light things on fire, I completely understand. A lot of people don't appreciate that um, part of the process. In that regard, you can still do it. You can still get those beautiful organic lines and um, movement of the shellac and these materials uh, without that fire, without that flame. I always call it, I refer to it as dry shellac burn and that is what I'm demonstrating here. So you'll see more of that here, that dry, everything is dried in other words, um, that, that can go on and crave over the surface of the encaustic. So, I can also do this with just a heat gun. I'm choosing, of course, to use my torch because I'm madly in love with the flame. 
it's just something I do, but you can do it with just your heat gun if that's what you have and that's what you prefer to use. So know that you'll get similar, if not same effects, uh, just pulling out your heat gun. Here we go. Like I said, all of it's dry. This is on wax. This is a wax. This is a painting underneath here, not a raw board. Um, I have white going on. I used white so that it would show up a little bit better and you can see the effect. So note that that does have to be done over an encaustic painting. And as is always the case, you could have been very deliberate about how you applied these, you know, done a, a design to it. I've just thrown them down as a demonstration purpose. And now I'm bringing the heat. I like to move up and down with this kind of, well, of course, it's going to bust. I like to come back and forth with this, kind of controlling it, if you will. So just as that wax underneath me starts to melt and move the material, I get away so it will harden again, dry again, and stop the movement. If I choose to move it more, I can certainly do that by coming in and playing a, little, a, a bit more with the heat and the melting wax. So that's the effect of the alcohol ink. Now I'm going to come into the oil paint. Very different effects, but the similar process. So you can see, let me turn that off for a minute. You can see, and I'll hold it up closer to the camera. You can see much more visible organic stringing going on with the alcohol ink. It's just the way it reacts over the wax as opposed to the oil paint. The oil paint is actually um, conjoining <laughs> with the, I've used that word twice now, um, with the wax underneath. So the wax is absorbing some of it and to taking it into itself. A little bit different movement. Now the pan pastel. I like to do milk paint with this sometimes too. Latex does weird stuff. It's all experimental, it's all play, it's all your own motivation and <laughs> desire to take the encaustic where you will. Investigate it in as much as you need to to make it your own form. So you can see they all react differently, but they all create a little bit of that crazing. And if you were to put it into play, so that it were purposely positioned in a painting and became part of you know, a mountain scene or across a valley. Use your imagination or a deliberate part of an abstract. It can become a very elemental and gorgeous part of your painting. Now all of these techniques can have wax applied over them once again. This is probably the most fugitive because it is an alcohol ink and it does get slick. But because there's so much exposed area, the wax still bonds to it nicely and creates a beautiful foundation for you to then, again, like I said, continue to paint over the surface should you choose to. This does not have to be a final element. So, have fun with that. Enjoy it. Play. Encaustic crazing. Just a few of many techniques available in this really cool, dynamic medium. I will see you Friday when I come at you for my usual Saturday at noon Eastern, Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern from my exhibit, Artist Reception. See you then. Thanks for coming along. I always have fun. And I cannot close because I swept the wrong. <laughs>